My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. But you know what I've learned? There's so much more that brings us together than divides us. Every corner of the world is unique, from big cities to small towns and everywhere in between. Through history, culture, culinary, and hands-on trial and error, I'll introduce you to the people, the places, and the secrets that remind us just how exciting it is to share with one another, to understand one another, and to realize just how connected we really are. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is an extra special edition of Beyond Your Backyard. The origins of American barbecue date back to the colonial times, with a first recorded mention back in 1672, and George Washington mentions attending a barbecue in Alexandria, Virginia in 1769. The mac and cheese must have been easy on those wooden teeth. But before we dive into the different types of barbecue, we're traveling down to St. Pete, Florida to visit my good friend Dr. Barbecue and his world-famous barbecue joint of the same name. I'm just the kind of guy that whatever I do, I don't do it the same as everybody else. What are we having here? This we right. start with apps. What do we got? These are the pork rind nachos. Okay. We've got some beautiful queso that we make with something called rattlesnake cheese. It's a, it's got tequila and habaneros in it. Really? And of course, there's some chopped brisket on there as well. Yep. But at the end of the day, this is what makes it special. That's a pork rind. That's not a tortilla That's chip. That's not a tortilla chip. That's, that looks amazing, right? Come on, we get all this. Here's the problem. You know, I'm a travel guy. I'm not necessarily a food guy. I still haven't learned how to take small bites. Every time I do a culinary, it never, it never fails. You're gonna I, fit in well here. I get excited. I'm like, look at this. I mean, come on, are you kidding me with this? Dude, that's killer. It's cool, isn't it? You know what, this brings me back. My dad used to eat pork rinds. Oh, by the bag full. This reminds me of my dad. This is, this is unbelievable, right? This is our cornbread. People really care about cornbread. If your cornbread's too sweet, my wife will fight you. I mean, and people care about cornbread, they really do. This is a barbecue restaurant. Cornbread is a thing. Right. How can we do it with respect to the original, but make it a little bit different, make it our own? I don't know how you would make something your own. I wonder, I wonder if we have any good ideas <laughs> how to make something your own. I just don't know. But I think it's really cool that we get to serve something people are that passionate about. Every guest that comes in here is passionate about the barbecue. And so if they get mad at us because we did this to the cornbread instead of serving it in big chunks, I'm okay with that because they really care. What do we got to help me out? Well, we have our, our ribs, which we buy quality family farm in Minnesota. We get all our part from there yeah. and we cook it with salt and pepper in the smoker. That's all we do to these ribs. They are great. They just leave as is. Got this it. is turkey. We, beautiful turkey Love that we turkey. brine Love and this. smoke it again with salt and pepper and it gets a gochujang glaze on the turkey. Just a little spicy sweet on top of that. This is our brisket. Lee cooks the brisket every day. It's great quality beef. He cooks it with salt and pepper and oak wood, and that's it. He's a real Texas guy. We hired him from a 100-year-old barbecue restaurant in Texas. He cooks that every day. And this is pastrami, house-made, house-cured. This is actually a recipe out of one of my old books. Sides are important, too. People really care about the side. I am one of those people. I agree. So our beans, we got three different kinds of beans in there. Okay. And some pork and some Jack Daniels. Okay. Well, yeah. sure. It seems to show up do. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I see a theme emerging here. But all This right. is a coleslaw made with bacon and blue cheese. This is actually my fiance Sandy's recipe. So you're not allowed to not like it, Eric, no got matter it, what. Got it. Thanks for the warning. Appreciate this that. This is our, we call this macaphony and cheese. Macaphony because there's no pasta in there. It's mac. We use hominy. It's a queso, it's that same queso sauce with the- With hominy? Yep, with hominy oh. in there instead of pasta. And and we bring back the uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos for a topping. And then applesauce, house-made applesauce oh. with atomic fireball candy mixed in. Yes! So it'll be have a spice oh, and a cinnamon kind of thing. Um, I, 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 love, I love all of these. Eating family style. Yeah. Oh, man. The blue cheese comes out of there. Man, those beans are killer too. Aren't those great? Those are great. So many places just start with the same beans and just put a bunch of sweet stuff in it. And we didn't want to do it that no. way. We wanted to do something a little different. They taste like barbecue beans at the end of the day, but they taste <laughs> like right. our barbecue beans. Yep, I agree. Oh, I love the kick. I'm gonna cry I'm gonna, on my own show. This is ridiculous, <laughs> I'm not doing that. What a nice thing. I'm like, telling you, that's a that's a phenomenal dish. This. That's phenomenal. Isn't it that's great phenomenal. Though? I'm so proud of that. 
the hominy, like I said, the hominy has a better texture than pasta. The pasta gets soft and gets mushy. The hominy will stay like that all day. Somebody watching this right now thinks to themselves, well, I was thinking about maybe going to St. Pete, I'm not sure. I would come down, I would fly down for those. St. Pete, why in the world is this really becoming a food town? We had a big arts kind of movement. So it's funny how that works, you know? All of a sudden it becomes an interesting place because all these artsy people are here. Got so it. now everybody wants to be here that's not necessarily artsy. Got it, and they all need to eat. They all need to eat. And then the brewery thing has, has served us well, but we've had the perfect amount of them and they seem to land in a, a nice variety. They landed in the right spaces around town. That's phenomenal. And that starts out as a piece of brisket. We make that from scratch all the way. And I'm definitely a sauce guy. I can do sauces for anything. I like dips, I like sauce, I like those flavor enhancers. There's no no sauce needed here. What do you think, I should, what should we do next? Uh, go for the turkey quick. We yeah, I love the turkey. Quick. Don't skip the brisket. No. And then I would finish with the Finish rib. with the rib. Okay. The ribs, I'm putting sauce on. So we go sweet or original? Should we go original? Yeah. Because you're an original. That's my original sauce from 30 years ago. I really did make that original sauce. It was sitting around, brought it out for the restaurant. It wasn't quite sweet enough, but I didn't want to change it, so we added a sweet one. Added a sweet to it, okay. And then we have a hot one, too. I'm just dumping this right on the top, yeah? Go for it. That's the way to do it. It's still a barbecue restaurant at the end of the day. You can get a little messy. Ooh. And that's something. And again, salt and pepper is all we put on there. We don't... We don't mess oh, around with it. We just on. doesn't need it. You know, we, we figured we'd try just salt and pepper. And if we needed to add some things, we'd add the rub or whatever Why it is. Why would you add anything to this? We buy good quality meat, really, the best we can find at every turn salt and pepper and oak. You know, you got all this cool stuff. I think we have a beautiful place. We got yep. these funky sides. But at the end of the day, this is as good as anybody's serving anyway. Doctor, thank you for this. My pleasure, Eric. Thanks this for coming. Barbecue, can I shake your hand? Uh, hey, I'll, I'll, it's not like I'm not used to getting messy. <laughs> As you know, barbecue is synonymous with Southern cooking, and the styles may vary based on region. The Carolinas, Texas, Memphis, even St. Louis, all lay claim to unique sauce varieties, rubs, and cuts of meat. In Little Rock, Arkansas, I checked in at Whole Hog Barbecue to learn how to make a little Q at home without a smoker. Jared, good to meet you, Thank man. You, sir. How you doing? My gosh, this is exciting. <laughs> I wish we had the scratch and sniff smell thing on the camera because the smell <laughs> just amazing. coming in it's amazing. here, it's, it's amazing. amazing. I mean, Whole Hog's been around almost 20 years, if yeah, I got yeah, my story yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What are they coming in for? Pork, pork, pork ribs, chicken, all of it, man. Yeah. My favorite's beef, though. Love the beef, beef really? brisket, number six sauce, good stuff. What's yeah. the number six sauce? It's Whole a mustard Hog. sauce. No way. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna try a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. you'll get some of that. All right, so they come in for pork, we get a pulled pork sandwich, we get the ribs. At home, how do we get this smokehouse flavor without having a smoker? Well, uh, chicken. Chicken would be, be easy at home. You can put chicken on your grill, you can bake your chicken, you can grill your chicken, you can do anything with chicken. Because you can run it on your grill at a real low heat and get almost Almost that. the same thing, yeah. Almost yeah, the same almost thing. Almost the same thing. So is that what we're gonna do today? Yes, we're gonna do some chicken up here in a little while, be good. All right, I love that. Right, well, let's go back and do it. Once again, here, the key is it's simple. Simple. Don't do too much to no, it, right? No, I mean, no. that's what we're working with here. Yeah, we have three chicken breasts. Got it. What are All we right. doing with them? Wash them off. All right. Nice. Basically, throw them in here. Yeah, we'll throw them in here. All right. Good looking chicken. All right. And then our special seasoning. See, this is the key, right? Yeah, this is the key. Look at this. Pork, chicken, and rib seasoning. Good this idea. is our special Secret sauce, I guess you could I say. Guess it's a secret, <laughs> it's a right? But personal taste, you gotta you gotta season it up prior yeah, to doing yeah, anything. Yeah, you gotta do something with it. You gotta put something, salt, pepper, anything. I mean just something. Something, okay. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna get this oh, my gosh. real good and seasoned. And I'll get it good and covered. No. Look at these. Good looking. Yeah, chicken breast. And all that connective tissue, but that's all going to break down, right? Yeah, that's all going to break down, yes. Because we're cooking it low and slow. Low and slow, yes. That's the key. All right, and that's all we do with our chicken breast. Keep it. Yep, 24 hours, we let it marinate for 24 hours, just like that. Just like this? Yep. yep. No oil, nothing? No, nothing, just like that. And then you toss it in the smoke. Yep. Right, here's our breast here. Look at these guys. Oh, my gosh. These look amazing. Yes. 
How long have these been in here? They've been in here about an hour, probably. We've yeah. probably got about an hour and a half more to go. So two, two and a half hours, yeah. that's it? That's it. And it keeps keeps all that moisture in there? All that moisture in there. It's, yeah, amazing. Okay, so this is the chicken we made. Yeah, chicken we made. You know, you can make us a chicken sandwich. Yep, killer. Killer, killer chicken sandwich. Look at that thing. What are we going to do with it? Is this going to be like a side dish over here? No, no, no. no. We're, we, can, we can do a chicken potato. No way. Yeah, yeah chicken potato. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Look at this. That's a good looking potato. Yeah. I see you got the small potatoes for us yeah, today. Yeah, small potatoes today. <laughs> now we can add, you can put your chicken on it now. Maybe we can get our sour cream, all the good sides. Hold on there. there. Yeah. Sauce it up. Sauce it up. Oh, yeah. Let's sauce that up, dude. What, what sauce is this? Is a number three number sauce? Number three sauce. That's one, that's one of our hot sauces. Yeah, we have a volcano that's hot, hot, hot. You said you like hot sauce, sauce. So. Wow. And you can add anything to it too. You can put sour cream, you can yep. put cheese, chives, but I like butter. The, I love uh, the way. Simple that, though. We're keeping that, it simple. I love the way that this potato softens everything up and brings it all together. I don't have to have a giant, but I'm going to need a bite of this sandwich. I'm going to have to get a bite of that. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I always take too big a bite. I can't say anything. My mouth full. Brother, thanks for this. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Outstanding. I'm just going to take this and go sit down. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Listen, if you're on vacation, chances are you'll find barbecue, if you know where to look. In New York City, as a matter of fact, I love Blue Smoke, Hill Country, and Dinosaur Barbecue up in Harlem. But have you had Korean barbecue? Well, it's another one of my personal favorites. But bringing barbecue to your table at home is easy with the perfect sauce. That's right, it's Dr. Barbecue to the rescue. I, I'm used to seeing you though, we're at some cool location together. It's kind of weird not touching you. Well, I don't, we, we are huggers, we are huggers, it's true. <laughs> but you know what, here's what's cool about this, right here, talk about a cool location. I got my, my home set here that we're on. And then we get to we get to a little insight as to where you are, which is are you St. Peter Clearwater? St. Petersburg. This is this is my new studio. It's also my backyard. <laughs> I love it. And and funny, we were talking about this interview of what time of day we were going to conduct this interview. You're like, oh well, the light is not so good at this hour. Or this hour. This hour. Is not <laughs> this dude is working it out. I love it. Um, it's a natural thing. You know, the sun goes over there and it gets on me and it wrecks the shot. Just, I mean, please, let's face it. Uh, it's about what you're making and you. I mean, come on. Uh, we were talking last week about what can you do with the house? How can you start to tackle these challenges? One of them, and one of the easiest things, is you and I have had hours-long discussions about salad dressings, marinades, homemade mayonnaise, and, and there's so much of that that you can make at the house. And I was reading an article that you wrote years ago in Food and Wine magazine, because you are Dr. Barbecue, I mean, come on, about pantry sauce, about barbecue sauce. And you can make your own barbecue sauce at the house, and yes, there are a million ways to do it, but I'm so glad. Is that what we're gonna make today? Well, we're gonna make this pantry sauce. I guess it's kind of a barbecue sauce. Um, the, the genesis of it, barbecue sauce in general, is easy to make, and, and you should be working. I always joke about you're working on your lifelong mother sauce. That you start your first barbecue soup sauce you make, you change it, tweak it, and 20 years later, you finally get it just right. I do that, and mine actually we use at the restaurant now, and that most people do. Unfortunately, there's so much <clears throat> good stuff out there now, like small band stuff. A lot of people have gotten away from it. It's a shame because it's just not that hard. Now, this is a little different. When my first cookbook came out in 2005, Food & Wine wanted to promote the book and do an article about it, which was really cool of them. But they wanted an original recipe. They didn't want to use a recipe out of the book because it's Food & Wine, and they wanted to own it for years to come. So yeah. I had to come up with something. So I had this idea that what if we made a chicken wing sauce that just was things that you had in your pantry? And it couldn't be any simpler. So I did, and, and it's funny, they used it, they liked it, they made a big photo shoot out of the wings with the pantry sauce on it. They just thought it was a cool idea. It actually was in their book, you know how they do a year-end book with the best recipes of the year, and it couldn't be any simpler. And I just looked at it yesterday, they're on their website, it's still there, 
from 2005. It has almost 4,000 reviews, and they're all five stars. It's five star review. It's really great. So you you know do stuff like this, and you know if this one's a little too spicy for you, just put a little less hot sauce in it. You like it sweeter? Put a little sugar. It's not that complicated. All right. Well, let's start with the ingredients list first. What are we going to need to get out and get on the counter? It's all right there in your refrigerator. Ketchup, soy sauce, Dijon mustard, or some kind of mustard, hot sauce, and a little bit of brown sugar. Now, you can substitute just about any of this. You know, any kind of sugar is going to work, any kind of mustard, any kind of hot sauce. Ketchup, well, you're going to need that. Right. But if you've got kids, you've got ketchup in the house. I <laughs> right. I, I, I really don't like ketchup, but I use ketchup in lots of different sauces because it's available to me. Uh, and it has that ba- it's got that basic, you know, it's got that tomato situation. It's got a little vinegar in it. It's got some spices in it. I'm noticing here, even as we start, where's the salt and pepper? Well, it's all in there. I mean, the soy sauce, I do this a lot. I use since the day I started cooking and discovered soy sauce. I'll often use soy sauce instead of salt. That just seems like a logical thing to me because it tastes better than salt. But it's really salty. I don't buy the low salt stuff. I buy real soy sauce and just use the right amount. And pepper, well, heck, I got a whole quarter cup of hot sauce here. We sure don't need any more pepper than that. So don't, you know, don't think about just salt and pepper. Okay, I want something. You know, when you make a sauce, this, it's all about that balance. So you need a base. Like you said, ketchup is always a great base because it doesn't, it's not going to and anything just about anything could go in with the ketchup and make it work so then you need something salty you need something sweet you need something spicy and you need something acidic that's the things that make up a a good barbecue sauce so now this doesn't have a lot of acidity in it the mustard's got vinegar of course the hot sauce got vinegar so i guess it does have more than i'm even saying you know those are the ingredients they can come from a lot of different places what are the amounts we're working with here so it's one cup of ketchup one quarter cup of hot sauce. You can you can drop that down a little bit if it's hot for you. A quarter cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of mustard, same exact amount, and a tablespoon of brown sugar. Now, you may want to double this. Looking back at this recipe, I probably would have made a quarter cup of brown sugar as well because there's a lot of hot sauce, a lot of salty. Again, it's all about that balance. But I don't know. I haven't tasted this in a long time. We'll see what we got. All right. So it's real simple. The Ketchup, mustard, this was a stone ground, Dijon, any kind of mustard is going to work. This was crystal hot sauce. I don't generally mess with them crazy hot ones. Uh, If you like that stuff, good for you. Yeah. Soy sauce, I use Kiko Man. I've been using that forever. It's salty as could be, but that's what it is. You just make it work in your recipe. I don't, to me, a low salt soy sauce doesn't make any sense. And then brown sugar, again, you could use... You could use uh, raw sugar. You could use white sugar for that matter. Now, the recipe that was in food and wine called for marinating the wings in this and then basting the wings only to about three quarters of the way done. If you marinate in a sauce like this, you can't leave, you can't eat it then. You could boil it to get it safe, or you could just brush it on, but stop while you're still cooking. Um, It doesn't need to be used as a marinade. It's also great as a sauce. The brown sugar in here, though, if you're going to just use it as a sauce, I would throw it in a microwave, just enough to melt the brown sugar and get it mixed in. First of all, I'm actually stunned at how easy this is. Now, can we use this as a straight-up dipping sauce right away, as is? You can use it just like it is. You make it a little grainy from the brown sugar. I would probably throw it in a microwave for a minute or two just to warm it up enough to melt the sugar. But other than that, yeah, that's what it is. You know, you can use it as a marinade, but then you're going to have to cook it or something. Uh, I like it just as a straight up sauce. Man, and what are the applications here? Where we talk about our proteins, wings, chicken. Yeah, yeah I think well, wings, chicken for sure uh, would go good on fish or go great on some fish because it's kind of like a spicy barbecue sauce. Don't forget that soy sauce in there too. That's going to give it a little bit of an Asian kind of kick to it. Um, I think even beef. I think it would work on some on some beef, like some beef ribs. I think this would be great. Pork ribs. I think regular old barbecue ribs. I don't know. I haven't tasted it in a long time. I'm going to give it a try. All right. Let's see. I probably haven't tasted this recipe in 15 years. It's funny when you get old. You know, the balance is really good. I don't know if I would add some more sugar because I'm not trying to make a, a sweet barbecue sauce. The soy sauce is just enough. 
The mustard gives it that little bit of vinegar kick. It's hot, but it's not too crazy hot. How long is this sauce going to last? I throw it in the refrigerator. How long? Well, every one of these ingredients lives in your refrigerator for months. So I don't see why combining them would make any difference. Uh, I, I don't know, a month, six weeks. I probably wouldn't leave it in longer than that. Uh, but it's going to hang around. You could put it in a bottle and just kind of keep it around if you like it. But, you know, I really want to touch on what you said about making it, making it your own. Every one of my recipes, every one of my cookbooks, I try to really emphasize that. If you read a recipe, you know, you may not be an expert to just look at it and say, well, it's got too much of that or too little of that. But when you make it and taste it, if you think this needs to be sweeter, heck yeah, put something sweet in it. And then next time, just put that in from the beginning. You know, you always should make it the way you and your family in particular, you know, just because I like it doesn't mean they will. So make it fit for everybody. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because what's cool about uh, this segment, which we're calling I'm Hungry, We'll Travel Soon, um, what's cool about this is that somebody can hop on an airplane and come down and see you uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, which is in the Tampa area. They're very easy. The, the restaurant, Dr. Barbecue, which you know I love. Um, the flavor profiles that you have presented in the restaurant really do address a large swath of, of, of palates, which I really enjoyed. So it's like, man, you could order off that menu and just keep ordering, keep ordering, and you'll find your way through different flavor profiles. Uh, and you will find your way easily through the proteins and through the sides and through the different sauces. I really think that's a really cool thing. Well, that was the idea. We wanted to feed everybody. We're in a really eclectic part of town. We opened a big barbecue restaurant, which, you know, you think about all the meat and in the neighborhood is a whole bunch of vegetarian restaurants. So uh, we want to feed everybody though. So you, you could actually eat your way, eat a very nice dinner a couple of times during the week at our restaurant and not eat any meat. But I wouldn't do that, but it's possible. We wanted to be able to feed everybody. Uh, I'm going to call it like a modern day diner, modern day funky diner. We feed everybody. It's very true. I mean, listen, I, I, I really am salivating just thinking about the menu. You know, I love that menu. We had so much fun talking together. We did an episode on Beyond Your Backyard. Will you come back and show us how to make something again? Sure. Yeah, I got my studio set up now. I'm all set. As long as it's not raining or anything the afternoon i can do this anytime you want i'm waiting for one of my guests to say uh, no eric i'm very busy out here i got not, i got i got a lot to do <laughs> the takeaway here get out on vacation find some barbecue come hungry and leave happy i'm eric the travel guy thank you for exploring beyond your backyard Duh. nailed it yes so what's the takeaway St. Augustine, Florida is the old, what is it, the oldest what? St. Augustine is the oldest, what? European, that's from, the word is European, that is not coming. So what's the takeaway? St. Augustine is, uh, I got it. So what's the takeaway? St. Augustine is the, oh, that's gonna be oh, good. Look at this well, guy, he's gonna make it, well, he's gonna make it. Oh! <laughs> I'll take I don't even hear them anymore. I hear bells in my head when there are no bells, and I don't know what that means. Well, that's not good.